So we just talked about audio and people not using visuals and creating brand affinity in a voice activated world. However, one of the things we also want to talk about and to ensure that we are a festival that is very well balanced, our next conversation is about what you do do with visuals and the future of television. And to take and lead this discussion, we have Leon Ciotis, who is the MD of UK and Southern Europe, Spotex. Leon, take it away. Thanks very much. Uh, and thanks for everybody being here. So we've got a fantastic panel today. And since there's a short amount of time, I'm going to jump right in Starting from, I guess, right to left, we have Stefan Karubla, who's the MD of RTL Ad Connect. Uh, RTL Ad Connect is the international sales house for the RTL broadcaster groups, as well as some other uh, companies such as ITV and Rai. We have Derek Mutter. This is one of these times when I avoid saying surnames. But uh, Derek is at Mondelez and looks after uh, buying for Northern Europe. Eva. Respo? Yeah. Why not? <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Each one of you gets 30 seconds, so you can introduce yourself again and correct me. Uh, Eva's at MCS, which is one of the largest French broadcasters uh, on the marketing team. And then Paul Mutter. There we are. Uh, Managing Director for IP Deutschland. So before we jump into it, Stefan's just going to give everybody a bit of an overview, set the stage for the panel. Uh, about some of the kind of new things that he's seen and that uh, they've seen in market. So I'm going to hand over to Stefan and then we'll jump into the discussion. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Stefan Koruble. I'm uh, Managing Director of RTL Ad Connect. So as you said, the International Advertising Sales House of RTL Group. Um, so I wanted to give you, uh, uh, um, I don't know if I click. Should I, should I click? Maybe. No, it's not working. Oh, okay. I wanted to give you a, a, a small information, a few uh, insights. Uh, we are publishing a book that we call the Total Video Key Facts. Uh, and we've been publishing this book like uh, for the last 30 years. Yes, uh, we're getting old. Um, and we do a tour uh, since the, a few months. We've been touring in, uh, in London, we've been in Paris, we've been in Germany, and in, uh, in Cologne, we've been in Amsterdam, we've been in Scandix and we will be soon in this very country in June in Milan. Um, and we, we try to give uh, to the media uh, world a few insights or trends of what's happening in the media industry at the moment. And a couple of trends I wanted to share with you today, of course, is one trend is about uh, uh, brand safety. Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe we're gonna switch. It's about brand safety. And you can see that brand safety when you are in London, in Paris, or in Cologne, has different meanings. But there is a very strong topic at the moment, and very hot topic, as you know, especially with the Cambridge Analytica thing uh, lately. Uh, very huge topic. Of course, it could be different from uh, one country to, to the other. Uh, if you look at Paris, for instance, where viewability uh, is a very hot topic versus London, where brand safety as a whole is a lot more uh, uh, um, uh, interesting. So this is the first trend in the industry, uh, the transparency discussion, uh, the brand safety, uh, where do I put my brand against what type of content is very important on the market. And the second trend is innovation. And we've been asking uh, like this floor of uh, senior executives in the different countries, what do you think would be, uh, 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 or would you be eager to invest more in, uh, in different types of innovation? So we showed addressable TV, we showed branded content, there's a big revival of branded content, you know, being closer uh, to the brand, uh, especially with this, uh, you know, brand safety discussion at the moment. And uh, Eva maybe will, uh, We'll speak about that in, in France. There's a revival of sponsorship, for instance, in France. Uh, AR, VR, you know, new technology, or uh, drive-to-web measurement, you know, to make the link between what do you invest and how, well, your, the type of investment you do in TV and what's the uh, uh, ROI online. And basically, in each of those markets, what you see is addressable TV seems to be the new growl. Of course, Germany, a lot more. Uh, uh, because it's a very much advanced market at the moment in the addressable TV. It's the same for UK. I, I unfortunately do not have the statistic here for UK, but very, they look very much alike uh, Germany. On the other side, France, you will see that branded content 
takes a bigger role. So that sets the scene for innovation. And when you talk about addressable TV, and this is the last slide I wanted to, uh, to share with you today, if you look at Europe, there are different technologies uh, available at the moment into uh, addressable TV. If you look at the UK, for instance, very far advanced market, thanks to Sky with its Sky Ad Smart, uh, it's very much uh, looking at addressable TV through connected set of boxes using uh, the satellite signal. If you look on the other side of, uh, of uh, the Manche, uh, uh, you, you see France, a lot more IPTV, a lot less uh, satellite penetration uh, market with uh, nearly 12 million IPTV set-top boxes. Still, you know, nascent market, a lot of experiences happening over there. And if you uh, go again on the right side, you have uh, a very strong market, the DACH region market, so uh, Germany, Austria, Switzerland. Uh, with uh, another type of uh, addressable TV uh, possibility using smart TV, connected TV, using the HBB TV uh, system. And, uh, and I think one of our panelists today will talk to you about this. So plenty of opportunities uh, around addressable TV. Unfortunately, for now, not a common stan standard. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Stefan. And I think, Paul, it makes sense to start with you since Germany seems to be you know, one of the countries leading the way with regards to addressable TV. And it would be great to understand what, you know, well, I guess, number one, why is it successful in Germany? Kind of what are the circumstances? Uh, and kind of what are you seeing in, in that market? I mean, why is it um, uh, successful in Germany? I think the most important point is uh, that we is, uh, have a quite interesting reach at the moment in Germany over HPB TV. We reach uh, around about 17 to 80 million households with around about uh, 30 million uh, people. This is uh, at the moment around about 45% uh, of the market growing day by day. The other aspect is um, addressable TV helps us um, to combine the advantages of the digital world on one side and the linear TV on the other side. So we have the reach. We have the content known from the linear TV with all technical possibilities that you know from uh, the digital campaigns what mean we are able to do one-to-one -one targeting um, on linear TV. And that is really a big advantage. The other aspect is that we are able to combine campaigns from digital and from linear what means um, we really can give you answers, what is cross-reach, what is net's reach. We can do retargeting, what means if we had three contacts in linear TV, we can offer you additional three contacts in the di uh, digital world. That's great. And Eva, by looking at this kind of chart, you would think that France would be quite far ahead in that there's a very large IPTV infrastructure, and therefore you would think things would be targeted. But uh, you know, I guess as with, I don't want to say as with all things French, but there could potentially be a law that gets in the way of really recognizing the potential here. Could you expand on that a bit? Exactly. Uh, there is an, a law, a regulation that runs from 1992 that actually uh, forbids uh, TV to be addressable to protect other media such as uh, press and radio. So in order to let them have uh, the local uh, market as well as the national. Um, but we're waiting for this regulation to evolve. Uh, there has been actually a task force that has been created between um, broadcasters and also telcos, because uh, what you have to bear in mind in the French market is that half of the population receives TV signal uh, through IPTV, which means through a set-top box. So this is a game with many players on the table, including the telcos. So we'll have to work together to uh, frame this market. Um, in the meantime, we actually talk with uh, our German neighbors uh, and we can apply addressable TV on connected TVs with the HBB TV signals. So we actually developed a format that's based on the same technology as uh, the German to, um, to launch an ad during a TV program um, that can be addressable. 
And what, was, what, is, what is important with this kind of connected TVs is because it works basically on an internet signal, is that you have a return path uh, to each of the TVs. And when we can do one-on-one, -on -one, it means that we can gather data, uh, know more uh, our audience, and then better target the ads. That's great. And you know, Derek, you really have the advantage here of looking at things from the buy side. How does addressable TV fit into your kind of broader media mix? Is this something that, as a brand, you guys are excited about, looking to invest in? Uh, or you know, is this you know, just something that you guys will kind of test as part of an innovation budget, but not something that you really think will be part of your longer term strategy? Yeah, I think it's definitely part of our strategy going forward. There's, I guess, the way we would look at TV or you know, you look at the ecosystem yeah. of where you can put your advertising across lots of things, and, and I think addressable TV is one of those things. So, you know, you've got your linear, your addressable, your online video, you've got um, maybe other distribution channels like your social media, etc. And I think, depending on different clients, it's like, what is the right mix of those different things? So, I think with with the stuff that we're doing in the UK, there's only really, you know, there's about a quarter of households at the moment that, that you can have addressable within. That's gonna, cut, that's gonna go up over time as kind of more people come on board, so up to probably 40% at the start of next year, and then maybe up to sort of 60 by sort of 2021. So at the moment, it's not in all households. I think different clients will have a different use case for it because I think the fact of addressable at the moment, overlaying data, it's a slightly more expensive thing to do than buying your standard linear TV. So it's, it's what you bring to bear to justify that cost within it at the moment. Um, so for uh, the application for us as an advertiser, um, we want to talk to everyone because we're, we're kind of, someone once described our target audience as everyone with a mouth because you know, everyone eats chocolate. So we, we can be quite cute about the targeting that we're doing, but ultimately we want to talk to everyone. So part of what I see addressable TV is, is about managing the delivery of our overall campaigns. So you know, what is the, the, the reach? Who are we hitting in all parts of the campaign? And then how can we enhance that with whether that's um, addressable TV or, um, um, or other things and bringing data, what data can you bring into it? Because otherwise you're just buying more expensive stuff that you don't know what it's doing. So, so long as you can make meaningful choices, now either you bring your own CRM data or you're making sense of your whole campaign data to, to know what, whether it's worth paying more. But I guess the, um, it's that kind of cost benefit. And I think there's more and more data coming into TV as a whole to make things smarter. So we do, we mentioned Sky before, um, we've done a lot of work with them on their panel as well in identifying what are the outcomes we get from our TV. So someone that watches a certain TV program, they then go on to buy a product. So let's buy more of that TV program versus another one. So the more we can bring in data and understand what's going on, I think, I think that's brilliant. So addressable TV done in the right way and as enhancement to the campaign, that, that can only be good for Definitely, us. I think maybe we'll put a pin in the data side, but Stefan, a couple of years ago, RTL, you know, kind of rebranded TV as total video, saying that no longer was television just this box in front of you in, the, you know, in your living room, but this was actually video across all screens. Is this a reality today? Are you seeing this from both the consumer side as well as, I guess, kind of the, the, the sales monetization side? Are we living in a true cross-screen world where you can run campaigns everywhere using addressable tools or? Yeah, yeah well, I guess uh, we're, we're living in a world of acronyms. <laughs> so uh, TV is a new one, so uh, at, at least for us. And we, we decided to redefine TV, uh, television in the old world in total video because we think that it's not longer, no longer anymore uh, a big flat screen uh, in, in, from the, in the living room, but it's, uh, you know, content everywhere, at a what mode, anytime, anywhere, any device. Um, and, you know, we, 
total video for us is a reality. It's a reality in the, in the, also in the figures. You know, I'm, I don't know if you know we're very much concentrated here on you know digital moving forward. You know, the new stuff, etc. But do you know that uh, linear TV is still resilient? It, it's, it's accountable for nearly four hours daily viewing every day in Europe. You know, this is a three hours fifty. 56 minutes every day in Europe last year. Uh, so linear TV is still resilient. Of course, some other things are happening, you know, especially in online video. Uh, there, is, there was a nice uh, uh, study from uh, Zenith Worldwide saying that by 2019, online video will account for more than one hour a day. But if you look at it from a helicopter view, uh, you know, Linear TV has been quite stable over the last few years, even though a little bit decreasing, yes, but quite stable all in all. And this additional uh, uh, viewing uh, online is, is on top. And when, when you look at a di uh, online video viewing, you will see that today it's half, but it will become 70% mobile. So definitely, yes, total video is a, is a reality. Uh, it's also a reality uh, from an advertiser's perspective. You know, we're uh, uh, constantly, every day, uh, discussing things with advertisers, their KPIs, their challenges, etc. And it's not longer, or not any more longer, only about the TV spot they're gonna uh, uh, broadcast on our channels. It's about you know how to, to reach the consumers, and of course, it's our uh, objective to expand our product portfolio and definitely addressable TV is one of the product portfolio we wanna, we wanna bring in, but we have some others also in online advertising, you know, just to facilitate and simplify the access to the inventory. Because at the end of the day, we are competing against, you know, not only our uh, uh, local uh, competitor broadcaster, we are all competing here against the new uh, GAFAs and, uh, and uh, the worldwide uh, pure players that bring, you know, additional uh, 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 possibilities at worldwide, uh, uh, with a worldwide scale, and we need to react against this. Yeah, and and Paul, I, I guess when we're, you know, when you're out in marketing Germany, the adjustable TV market, where are these budgets coming from? Who are we talking to? Are you talking to your standard agency buyers? Is it different teams? Does this stuff come from your TV teams, does it come from the, you know, kind of digital teams? Uh, where does, you know, where does the, not the fictional money, because I guess it's there, but where does this money sit? The way you book and you buy at the moment, addressable TV is, is more the way you, you know from the digital area. So most of the budgets at the moment are coming from the digital side. But we think when, uh, especially video and video placements will come more and more also in the addressable sector and that will come with the next HPB TV standard 2.0 um, uh, at the end of this year. Then uh, we will also see budget shifts from linear um, uh, to addressable TV. At the moment it's more from the digital sector. Yeah. I mean, and ever, I guess it's still kind of a bit too far in advance, but when you're thinking about how this, you know, the way this is bought, how does this then get measured? I know that you do a lot of stuff within measurement. I know that it's not quite in the French market quite yet, but uh, I mean, I guess what's your ideal world? What are you thinking about uh, down the road? So indeed, it's quite soon to answer this question, but addressable TV is all about um, getting the best of the um, digital world uh, to enhance the TV world. So the aim is also to enhance the value proposition of TV. So, for example, we will not sell only social demo, it will only be a, a combination of social demo and other uh, household data. Um, and since it, it's addressable, it cannot really be um, measured as TV is now measured panel-wise. Um, so I'm thinking it's more a digital combination of a GRP, and then all the discussions are about of course, the, the value uh, of the right data. And I'm seeing some signals here that we may be running low on time. So I'm going to jump really far forwards. Uh, I've been listening to a podcast, re podcast recently, and he breaks into a session called Overrated, Underrated. So it's a bit of a, bit of a rapid fire just to get the views from the panel on a couple of different topics, uh, just to say if something is overrated or underrated. So Stefan, maybe we'll start with you, and then we'll walk our way down. 
the duopoly or triopoly or whatever you want to call it, GAFA, overrated or underrated? Oh, this is a tough one. Um, it's rapid fire though, so let's be quick. What do we think? I think it's a little bit underrated because I think the worst is yet to come. Uh, we know Facebook and Google. I think Amazon is quite big in data, so that's one of our biggest challenge to come. Yeah. Great. Derek, the death of the agency, overrated, underrated? Tough. Um, pretty overrated, I think. Um, I mean, you, you still need experts within that particular field. We're not good for us. Do we want to employ all those people in-house? Probably not. I know from my time working agency side, the benefit of working with clients is that you work across a ton of different things. So I'd work in retail, I'd work on FMCG, I'd work on um, um, you know, film companies, and, and you can start to cross-pollinate all those things, and you're, you can pick the experts in. You may only do one search campaign a year, but you can go to get the search expert within the agency to do that. So why, you, can, you can't recreate that. You can't recreate the scale of an agency. You can't recreate the expertise and the energy in that in, in your own companies. So it's yeah. about balancing that. I think you do need someone in-house, because otherwise I'd be out of the job, but um, <laughs> just to watch that people are doing the right things. But yeah, the yeah. agency's not dead. Okay. Ever the death of television or linear television. What do we think? Overrated? Underrated? I think it's false. False. So <laughs> o overrated then. Yeah. Uh, no, for example, in France, when you put uh, all the video content that is watched, SVOD, online platforms, TV, catch-up TV, etc., 91% of the content that is watched is TV content. And uh, there's, there's been one keyword that, has, that really needs to... Um, to be present is quality. Uh, quality for the users, comfort of the experience. So TV content is content safe, um, brand safe, ad safe, and that will be in the long term um, the main value of TV. Yeah. Pal, you get the boring one. GDPR, overrated, underrated. Is it gonna decimate industries or uh, will we live to see another day? Uh, yeah, I think for, for more than 90% of the market, it's everything but boring. Um, um, no, incredible. I mean, um, um, there is something developed for a market from people who do not really understand how the market works. Um, it's a good example how dangerous um, uh, politicians can be. I think it's really a threat uh, for the digital market. It's a threat for the consumers who should be protected by the law because um, if, if it really comes um, like it looks like at the moment, advertising, monetized um, um, platforms, video models, advertising, publishing will be very difficult in the future. So I think we will lose a lot of content. We'll have much more content behind a paywall and uh, it strengths the American player and not the European player. The American player have now for years platforms uh, where login is normal. That's not normal on a, on a new side, on a weather side, or on a content side. So it's really a disadvantage for us in the competition. So um, makes me angry and uh, okay. it's not so easy. So underrated. It's definitely bigger than uh, what we're giving you credit for. Um, okay, we're gonna go one final question and I'm sure something's gonna start you know, flashing red at some point. Um, but this is about innovation, so we gotta do a bit of future gazing. What's next for television? What should we be most excited about uh, from your own perspective? From my own perspective, I think, you know, yeah. TV must be, uh, or um, we need to work on a simplified access to inventory, because that's what our competitors are doing, and we need to bring alternatives on the market. Um, I think what I'm, a lot of what we're, is the future is the stuff that we're seeing now, I think. Um, I just don't think we've started to use it properly. I think what really excites me is taking all of the stuff that we've been able to do in the digital space historically in terms of personalizing, mess customizing messages rather than, or personalizing messages to people and seeing a much better outcome. We've done it in digital outdoor, location based, we've done it, you know, purposing for different platforms that we've advertised on, and now we're going to be able to do the same sort of stuff in TV, 
whether that you know related to the content that we're watching or maybe it's you know what, what the weather's doing outside we push hot chocolate when the weather gets cold etc that's what i'm really excited about bringing all of that to bear and the creativity that will bring to tv because i think that's been a bit closed up to now we haven't been able to do that so i think the future's now and i think think we can take advantage of it it's a good cash phrase um i think that TV is the media where the ad space is the most, um, most the advertising is mostly accepted because it's a historical uh, ad um, based uh, media and that's a, of great value. So I think that you have to put uh, the consumer first, the, the viewer first and always propose a better contextualized advertising, better targeting of course, but we really have to protect this high value. Um, and only develop innovations that will go in the sense of a better user experience, also in terms of advertising. Yeah, I think um, based on what we see now in addressability TV, the next step will be that the digital world and the linear TV world will grow together. And uh, I think in future we'll do your bookings in once um, um, over uh, laptop, TV, uh, a mobile phone um, with all information um, about your contacts and all possibilities uh, that you know at the moment from the digital area. That's great. And do we have time for questions from the audience? Great. Any questions? Right here at the front. Right, on it's, the a, it's a small room. Speak yes. loudly. Uh, people are welcome. Uh, so one thing I was wondering about is if uh, you, for instance, Mondelein came with your CRM data and then gave to the publishers to ask for SPL TV. Would it be possible to get uh, feedback from that data set? See, it's what do my uh, top clients use, consume, and then you could use that to inform the media planning that you do on linear TV. I don't know if that's a possibility. You can definitely use so so. I guess it's what data you've got, isn't it? And if you can bring data to bear, then then you've got that option. But absolutely, you can do that. You know, we're, we're starting, we're not, we don't have our own, we're not bringing our own data in that way, but the stuff that I talked about doing with Sky, looking at the outcomes or the sales, and then it's mapping that back to a particular genre of TV advertising or a particular spot and saying, right, we want more of data and we want more of this. And so it does influences the whole linear approach to TV, but the beauty of having that in one kind of place from a kind of panel or a data point of view is you can start to decision your digital off the back of that. So it starts to stitch, it's a bit of a patchwork of lots of bits of information everywhere at the moment, I think. And you've just got to look for something to stitch it all together. So using something, whether it's that or something else, there just needs to be a point it comes together. And unfortunately, it's sat in so many different places at the moment. But, but yeah, Stefan, you're doing something similar, aren't you? Working with advertisers and having them bring their first party data to the table with the broadcasters. Yeah, I was, I was mentioning the access to the inventory, but uh, I think we need to simplify to the max uh, uh, the access to the inventory, and, but also the access to, uh, to some data. Yes, for now it's confidential stuff uh, we're doing with some clients, but yes, we, we want to, uh, um, you know, to, uh, to, to mix their data, our own data, in a, um, you know, using uh, Spotex, yeah, for, for instance, yeah. <laughs> um, you, using our own ad technology in order to, uh, to make sure that we enrich the information on the customers. And we won't, don't want to do that only in one country, we want to do that in multiple countries. That's what we're working on uh, in, in pan-European uh, access. Uh, we started with uh, an initiative called the Video Marketplace. Maybe you've heard of it. Yeah, there are some other initiatives on the market, like EBX from our competitors. Uh, but definitely we're working on that route and definitely mixing and enriching customer knowledge uh, via our first party data, but also data from, the, uh, from, okay. our, from our clients. Okay. Were there any other questions? No hands. Well, with that, I'd like to thank the panel. You guys would be fantastic. Thanks so much.